Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. One of my aims is to maintain and hopefully increase my lean muscle mass, as this increased muscle mass is negatively correlated with all-cause mortality, not to mention it helps protect against frailty. I recently came across an interesting paper showing that essential amino acids are highly bioavailable and help muscle synthesis more effectively than whey protein. Based on this, I have started taking them as a supplement. I'm using amino complex from Thorn, which contains the nine essential amino acids. I started taking it today, one seven gram scoop before each workout. I picked this brand because it only contains the nine essential amino acids. Other brands had performance strengths, which included other ingredients. As I take a number of supplements already, I wanted something that only had the essential amino acids. This is not intended to replace my current dietary protein, which I will continue to take at the current level. To discuss why I've started, let's go through this paper, Effects of Essential Amino Acid Supplementation on Exercise and Performance, which is written by the International Society of Sports Nutrition. This is a position paper, which from what I can see means that the paper itself has not been peer reviewed, though all the literature they reference are peer reviewed papers. Here is how they describe the process of developing the position paper. It is requested by the journal and written by some selected authors before being reviewed, revised, approved, and published. The aim of the paper is to provide guidance to various groups about essential amino acid supplementation. So with that in mind, let's have a look at what they found. First off, what are essential amino acids? Humans have 21 amino acids, which are used to make proteins. Nine of these are essential, which means that we cannot make them ourselves and we need to get them from our diet. Six are conditionally essential, which means that under some circumstances, we cannot make sufficient quantities. And some are non-essential, which we can make internally. The paper does not separate out conditionally essential and non-essential and only discusses the nine essential amino acids. Here are the structures of the nine essential amino acids. Histidine, isoleucine, leucine, lysine, methionine, threonine, tryptophan, phenylalanine, and valine. The three branch chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine, are essential and promote muscle building. However, they are not sufficient on their own to build muscles, as the other essential amino acids are required and may not be available. Let's go through the summary of their key findings. The primary area of study for EAAs has been muscle protein synthesis, shortened to MPS. Note that muscle turnover is critical to the health of muscle tissue, even if there is no growth. Supplementing with free-form EAAs, so not as part of a protein, but as an amino acid, leads to a quick rise in EAA plasma concentrations and promotes muscle protein synthesis. With an ordinary protein intake, it is safe to supplement with EAAs as the safe limit is well above the typical dose. When not paired with exercise, MPS occurs with doses of 1.5 to 3 grams of EAAs and plateaus at 15 to 18 grams, after which further dosing does not seem to provide any benefit. EAAs can stimulate MPS without non-essential amino acids being consumed at the same time. The amino acids on their own stimulate MPS more than the same amount of protein. Taking EAAs during the day does not impact the growth potential of protein in a normal meal. For older adults, a higher percentage of leucine is needed for optimal MPS to overcome the anabolic resistance. EAAs can show improvement in function without exercise. If you are in caloric deficit, more EAAs are required to build muscle. So we will touch on some of these points as we go through the specific topics. I will focus on building muscle in general with the relationship to older adults. I do not cover regimens which might be more applicable to more serious athletes. First, a quick review of muscle synthesis. Muscle is constantly being made and broken down. The ratio between these two defines whether muscle mass is increasing or not. Muscle turnover is beneficial even if the creation and breakdown are the same as the old damaged tissue is replaced with newer, better functioning tissue. Stimulating MPS is the primary goal 
of EAAs. Let's start with supplementing with EAAs without accompanying this with exercise. The thing to keep in mind is that the breakdown of muscle is happening all the time, and this muscle needs to be replaced to retain muscle mass. MPS to replace this natural wastage is dependent on having the building blocks available. An oral dose as small as 1.5 grams of EAAs has been shown to stimulate MPS, while the maximum useful dose appears to be about 15 to 18 grams, after which no further stimulation occurs. To stimulate MPS, EAAs on their own are sufficient, and it's not necessary to consume proteins at the same time. This was seen in a study with participants aged around 69 years old, who were given either 18 grams of EAA or 40 grams of protein, which included 18 grams of EAAs as well. The MPS in both groups was the same. The idea is that the body has sufficient non-essential amino acids present to be able to build the muscle. EAAs as a supplement stimulate MPS more than a complete high quality protein, even if the protein contains more EAAs. In this case, three grams of EAA stimulate MPS to the same degree as 10 grams of EAAs in 20 grams of whey protein. Adding EAAs to whey protein enhances the MPS effect. Though this study looked at young people, whereas the previously mentioned studies have been with older adults. Free-form EAAs are absorbed and appear in the plasma faster and at a higher concentration than high-quality protein, in this case, lean beef, which leads to higher MPS. The study found that a 100% increase in plasma EAA concentration resulted in a 34% increase in FSR. And from the graph, the increase was greater than 300%. Here, FSR is fractional synthetic rate, a proxy used for MPS measurements. One last point on EAAs without exercise. As we get older, it's harder to build muscle, a phenomenon known as anabolic resistance. To get over this resistance, older adults require a higher percentage of leucine for the same MPS. In the study quoted, 40% leucine stimulated MPS approximately 50% more than the lower leucine profile, despite having the same number of EAAs. Moving on from muscle growth to improvements in physical function in older adults without exercise. In a study of 12 glucose intolerant participants, 11 grams of EAAs twice a day showed improvements in lean mass and functional tests such as usual gait speed and the time floor transfer test which measures how long it takes to stand from a sitting position on the floor. In another trial in Japan with sarcopenic older females, supplementation with three grams of EAA and exercise significantly improved walking speed as well as leg muscle mass. There was also a group only taking EAAs and only exercising who also saw improvements, though the best was with both combined. In another study, 92 low-function adults were given either 15 gram of whey or 15 gram of EAA or nutritional advice. Those taking EAAs significantly increased six-minute walk test, grip strength, and leg strength. There was an improvement in the whey protein group as well, but it was significantly less than that of the EAA group. Efficient amino acids are required to increase muscle. If exercise only is performed, here RE is resistance exercise, there is increased muscle turnover, but the muscle balance remains negative. Adding amino acids can turn this positive, and in combination with resistance exercise, has the best effect. In this study, the participants were given either EAAs or whey protein, with the outcome that EAAs alone had the same benefit as the complete protein. So if we are exercising and taking EAAs, what is the optimal timing? Taking before or after showed a 130% increase in phenylalanine, which is used to determine the EAA plasma levels. However, the uptake of phenylalanine, which is a proxy for MPS, was much greater when the drink was taken before the exercise, with approximately threefold increase in delivery of amino acids, though it was positive in both cases. Note that in this study, the amino acids were combined with a carbohydrate to ensure insulin and so to activate mTOR. 
most of the research has been done on resistance training and MPS. However, it's also worth looking at the impact of EAAs when doing aerobic training. Looking particularly at older adults with an average age of 72 taking EAAs or EAAs and three times a week aerobic exercise, both groups saw increased MPS, but the aerobic group also improved muscle quality and faster 400 meter walking speed. I had a look at some other channels who discuss essential amino acids as a supplement, and some have said that they do not add a lot of value on top of adequate protein. However, these channels did not list any references, so I could not investigate further. I thought that the possible benefits outweighed the downsides, which as far as I can tell, are just the cost of the supplement. I'm over 60 now, and I wanted to see if this will help me build more lean mass. I will watch my muscle percent, which is about 42.3 now, to see if it improves. I will let you know how I get on. Thank you for your attention. I hope that you found the video helpful. I wish you all well, and I will speak to you again soon.